Freddy, Jason, Michael and Chucky lorded over the 80s, dominating our screens and our scares. But there was plenty more to the decade than these genre giants. I'm Tilly from What Culture, and these are 9 80s slasher movies you may not have seen. Number 9. Bad Dreams 1988's Bad Dreams is a movie that's often vetoed as a blatant rip-off of the previous year's smash hit A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and it's easy to see this argument as both star Jennifer Rubin and both feature a charred antagonist appearing only in visions. The movie follows Cynthia, the only survivor of a doomsday suicide cult as she awakens from a 13-year coma. Still haunted by visions of her charred cult leader, Cynthia is alarmed when her visions start to play out in reality. I would be too, to be honest. The first thing to note about Bad Dreams is that it is very well made. 20th Century Fox sank $5 million into this slasher flick, and it wasn't wasted. Beautiful photography and sleek direction immediately elevates Bad Dreams and brings a sense of class to the killings. Jennifer Rubin shines as the traumatised final girl Cynthia, while Richard Lynch is wonderfully sinister and perfectly cast as our villain. Although this may have been a Kruger cash grab by Fox, Bad Dreams certainly transcends the similarities to become its own unique film. Number 8. Visiting Hours This Canadian slasher follows an ambitious reporter who finds herself targeted by a masochistic, misogynistic psycho. Surviving his brutal attack, she is admitted to hospital where he seeks her out and continues to torment her. Once again, we have 20th Century Fox sparring no expense and bringing us this beautifully made, surprisingly dark slow burn slasher. Much like the previous year's Halloween 2, Visiting Hours takes full advantage of its hospital setting with long, dark corridors aplenty. There is a permanent feeling of dread and discomfort as we're not quite sure if the threat is just around the corner. If you want a slasher with a subtle feminist message and endless cat and mouse antics, Visiting Hours is definitely worth checking out. Number 7. Silent Scream this criminally underrated flick follows student Scotty as she takes a place at an off-campus boarding house run by the peculiar Engels family. Soon, borders begin meeting grisly ends and the local police suspect the mysterious family. Silent Scream takes a cue from Hitchcock's Psycho and uses a similar family with a secret plot thread. Although the audience is let in quite early on as to what this secret is, it still doesn't make the film any less effective. A wonderfully eerie atmosphere permeates this picture, putting the viewer on edge as we implore characters to leave this rambling, creepy mansion. The movie's high tension is aided by an incredible cast, including Scream Queen Barbara Steele, and Hollywood legends Yvonne DiCarlo and Cameron Mitchell. The presence of such fine actors ensures a plot which could seem high camp in hindsight is always taken seriously. Still sadly overlooked today, Silent Scream remains an effective and eerie ride. Number 6. Death Valley Following in the footsteps of Wes Craven's The Hills Have Eyes, 1982's Death Valley replaces hungry cannibals with a serial killer that has a fondness for sharp objects. They often do, though. The movie follows a young family as they pass through California on a road trip vacation. Unfortunately, their curious child stumbles across a murder scene and becomes the killer's next target before he can identify him to the authorities. Death Valley takes the unusual step of having the protagonist be a nine-year-old boy, with the stellar turn from Peter Billingsley being the movie's crowning asset. The young actor is lovably sarcastic but never grates on the viewer, which can't be said about a lot of child actors, especially in horror. I'm looking at you, Samuel from the Babadook, you really can go and eat Anyway, the vast desert setting adds a different kind of paranoia to Death Valley than that of the average slasher as well. Here, there are no places to hide as the desert stretches as far as the eye can see. Even then, though, we know a slash-happy killer still lurks somehow unseen in the wide open space. Number 5. Moonstalker this cheesy late 80s offering tells the story of Bernie, a local legend whispered about at campfires. He has returned to the snowy Nevada wilderness to reclaim his childhood home. What sets Moonstalker apart from the sea of slashers is the setting. This movie is a winter camp slasher as opposed to the usual summer set fodder. The change in season adds untold atmosphere to the campy little story, no pun intended, as campfires glow menacingly against a bleak, snowy wilderness. All the traditional slasher movie trappings are here to be enjoyed too. There is gore aplenty, some ridiculous 80s hair and fashion, and even a knockoff Halloween style score from future Academy Award winner Douglas Pipes. It all adds to Moonstalker's undeniable charm. Had this film received more attention, the Stetson clad antagonist Bernie could easily have become a B movie horror icon. His familial motive certainly jives with the horror heavyweights of the time, and his methods of execution are certainly viscerally varied. All of the 80s cheese and horror cliches wrapped up in a 
surprisingly cold and bleak setting make Moonstalker one to seek out. Balancing camp with a truly menacing atmosphere is an impressive feat for any no-budget picture, and it's a shame that no label has opted to rescue this obscure gem yet. Number 4. Hell Knight the film follows a group of four college pledges who must prove their loyalty to their peers by spending the night in the abandoned Garth Manor. Unfortunately, the old manor isn't as abandoned as it seems. Two things set Hell Knight apart from similarly themed college slasher films of the time. The first being the glorious production and costume design. Characters are swathed in outlandish fancy dress as the terror unfolds and the manor setting is laden with dancing candles and antique furnishings. When these impressive and unconventional elements are combined with very strong performances from a likeable cast, one cannot help but find Hell Knight quite charming. Our favourite possessed queen Linda Blair tackles final girl Marty with gusto and her Victorian era costume gives her tense chase scenes an atmosphere akin to a Hammer horror film. Although relatively light on gore, Hell Knight remains engaging thanks to wonderfully witty dialogue courtesy of future Hollywood heavyweight Chuck Russell and stunningly crafted visuals. Halloween producer Erwin Yablins again shows us that a modest budget does not have to make for a bad or boring film. To experience Hell Knight in its full gothic style glory, a stunning Blu-ray set from Shout Factory is available, thankfully ensuring this little scene gem gets the treatment it deserves. Number 3. The Mutilator I love how these titles don't mess about, there's absolutely no need for subtlety here with this lot. The Mutilator follows a lad called Ed and his college buddies as they head to the beach to close up his father's condo. Unbeknownst to them, Ed's father is still around and plans on using his trusty set of weapons to dispatch each one of them. The Mutilator is a tale of lingering rage and resentment finally brought to boil, as Ed's drunkard father finally decides to slaughter his son for accidentally killing his wife years before. Ordinarily, this would be quite a grim storyline, but the Mutilator is slathered in so much 80s cheese that it becomes an undeniably enjoyable watch. Director Buddy Cooper does his best with what's at his disposal, cutting budgetary corners by shooting at his family's beachfront motel. He opts to use his budget on some elements that would make the mutilator stand tall above the crowd. The pounding synth score and buckets of impressive practical gore, including disembowelment, decapitation and a hook to a particularly sensitive area, make the movie prime slasher cinema viewing. As an audience, we await the next savage gore scene hungrily to see if it outdoes the last. The Mutilator stands out from the crowd by somehow managing to be unapologetic with its gruesomeness, but endearingly cheesy at the same time. Number 2. Honeymoon Horror Honeymoon Horror follows business owners Elaine and Vic as they prepare to welcome three newlywed couples to their lover's island, Honeymoon Resort. However, someone uninvited prowls the island thirsty for blood. Sounds pretty much like Love Island. When one considers that this picture was made for a mere $200,000 in just two weeks, the final feature seems a lot more impressive than it has any right to be. But the acting on show isn't particularly good, and the tired comedy cops routine in particular is groan-inducing. However, the eerie isolated setting and a surprisingly unsettling ambient score make for some particularly tense moments. The gore, when it comes, is unflinching and brutal, successfully keeping the little scene killer an ever-present threat. The movie was the first ever film to be released direct to video, in a move by Sony to take advantage of a newfangled market. Evidently, it worked as Honeymoon Horror went on to gross $25 million. Today, the film can only be seen on faded VHS rips, having never received an updated release. Doesn't that seem a little unfair, given the profit this little movie made? And number one, The Fan. Taking the top spot on this list of overlooked slashers is a movie that just oozes style. The fan stars Lauren Bacall as an aging Hollywood legend that finds herself targeted by an obsessive fan convinced that they're meant to be together. With its simple premise of the perils of fame, the fan could have easily turned into a preachy commentary on celebrity worship. However, brilliant filmmaking and absolutely flawless visuals make it almost impossible to tear one's eyes from this picture. With stunning cinematography, a wonderful score and performances from Hollywood icons, the fan is top tier horror. Bakul shines as she surrenders the icy cool she is so famous for and gives into fear as her character's life crumbles around her. Terminator's Michael Bean tackles his first leading role with ease too. Despite his good looks and childlike manner, when Bean turns sinister, he elicits chills. The fan is similar in tone and style to the works of both Alfred Hitchcock and Brian De Palma, and so well made and engrossing that it seems almost a shame to call it a slasher. Unfortunately, the movie was savaged upon release and subsequently disowned by Bacall. I'm guessing that she wasn't a fan? Yeah? Yeah? 
And that's our list. Know of any other 80s slashers that just fly under the radar when they really shouldn't? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and swing on by our channel again if you want to catch more content. I've been Tilly and this has been What Culture. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you're looking after yourselves. Until next time.